Hello, everybody. Happy Monday afternoon. Hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today. But first, before we get to the football content, we just hit 2,050 subscribers to the YouTube channel. 2,050. Shout out to all the subscribers, old and new. And, of course, special tip of the cap goes to the 31, as of right now, channel members, including new members, Ayan Ali, King Taco, and Salacious Crumb, and elite channel members, Rip. Scott Todd, Y2KHA, Brandon McKell, Hasher for MVP, and VGK Tigers 75. All right. Today's video is going to be one last overall look at the NFC playoff race and where the Seahawks fit in and what kind of seating they can expect to get in various scenarios. And then after this video, I'm going to kind of move away from focusing on worrying about what other teams do because there really isn't a ton to play for for these Seahawks in these last three weeks in terms of exactly where they're going to fit into the playoffs. We can say with 99% certainty that the Seahawks won't make the playoffs. And we can also say with 99% certainty that if they win in week 16 against the Rams, they will win the division. But other than that, there's really not a ton to say. So that's the main reason why I discontinued the who Seahawks fans should be rooting for videos. Because to say that we need to care about what the Packers do, what the Buccaneers do, what the Vikings do, what the Cardinals do, what the what all these teams do, I think it just kind of takes focus away from what really matters with this team, which is winning. And if we win, we just have to trust that things will take care of themselves come the playoffs. But one last video where I go through the scenarios in which the Seahawks can benefit or be hurt by based off what happens in other games. So this is the ESPN playoff machine. If you're um, familiar enough with uh, playoff scenarios, you've probably seen this thing before. Basically, you can go through and predict the winner of every game for the next three weeks. And the winners and losers that you pick decide who gets what seeds. So let's start with the scenario where the Seahawks win out and the favorites win every other game. All right, so if the Seahawks win out, if they win all three of their remaining games at Washington, home against LA, and then at San Fran, they will... If the favors, favorites hold up, they will be the three seed. Now, in order for them to move up, let's take a look at something that needs to happen. So, first of all, let's talk about the Saints, because it's going to be slightly easier for us to leapfrog the Saints. They have a game coming up in Week 15 against the Chiefs. They are very likely to lose this game. The Chiefs are clearly better. The Saints are either going to have Taysom Hill out there or a Drew Brees coming off a major rib injury. So... Odds are very good the Chiefs will win this game. However, the thing to note here is that even if the Saints lose this game and end up at 12-4, and four, they would still be seated ahead of a 12-4 and four Seahawks team. They have a tiebreaker. So the New Orleans Saints would take precedent, would be above the Seahawks in a 12-4 and four tie. So what needs to happen for us to actually jump the Saints? Well, first, obviously, we need to win out. Then we would need to find another loss for the Saints. So they're home against the Vikings in Week 16. Vikings aren't playing terrible football. And then we have a Week 17 game in Carolina against the Panthers. And the Panthers have been pretty pretty dead in the water lately. So in order for us to actually jump the Saints, we probably need the Vikings to come through for us. And as you can see... That would flip around the seedings. We would then be the second seed over the Saints, playing the Vikings, who would, in this scenario, be the seventh seed over Arizona on the strength of their win against the Saints in Week 16. Now, you may have noticed that this does not buy us a first-round buy because there's only one first-round buy this year, and that first-round buy is currently going to Green Bay, who projects to go 13-3. and So... What needs to happen for the Packers to fall below, below us? Well, they have one game remaining on their schedule that's very interesting and potentially tough, and that is Week 16 home against the Tennessee Titans. So let's say the Titans find a way to win that game. 
And this is kind of the thing that I'm talking about when I say there aren't that many routes going forward for the Seahawks in terms of improving their playoff seeding. Green Bay could lose to the Titans and still get the number one seed right now based on the fact that A, they beat the Saints, but they also have a tiebreaker over the Seahawks. So if you want the one seed, not only do you need the Saints to lose two more games, you also need the Packers to lose two more games. And where are you going to find that loss for the Packers? Well, in week 15, the Packers play home against the Panthers, and they are, as I just said, in regards to their Saints matchup, pretty much dead in the water. However, if you will look at week 17, it doesn't get that much better. The Packers play the Bears in in Soldier Field, granted, but this is not a game that you would ever really expect the Bears to pull out. So the Packers went losing three, two of their last three games, really unlikely. But if you gave the Bears this game, then yes, the Seahawks at 12-4 and four would be the number one seed. But this is what it's going to take. You need the Saints to lose two games, which means they probably need to uh, lose their Week 16 matchup and go on a three-game losing streak at home against the Vikings. And then you would need the Packers to lose probably the last two games they play against the Titans and the Bears. So, yeah. Even if this team wins out and wins the division, it's just not looking very likely that they're going to be able to move up any higher than the three seeds. So let's reset everything back to, you know, favorites winning real quick. Um, let's see here. Where are the Packers? Where are the Packers? Where did I put them? Um, and let's take a look at one other interesting thing about the scenario in which the Seahawks win the division. Interesting fact. If the Seahawks beat the Rams in week 16 and then beat the 49ers in week 17, then this game for Seattle and Washington means nothing. If the football team wins this upcoming game against the Seahawks, then the Seahawks will still win the division if they win out. So, in that regard, this upcoming Washington game actually doesn't really mean anything, which is surprising when you consider how tight the NFC is. Now, I still think we need to win this Washington game just for the fact that this team needs to build some confidence going into the playoffs, but it is interesting to note that at this point, this Washington game is very unlikely to mean anything for the Seahawks. It's all going to come down to the Los Angeles game the next week, pretty much. So anyway, now let's start playing with the scenarios where the Seahawks don't win the division. So let's give them the win against Washington, but let's say they cannot beat the Rams in Week 16. Well, this would kick us down to the sixth seed, playing the Rams in the first round of the playoffs. And obviously, we in this scenario would have gotten swept by the Rams so we don't really want to play them in the playoffs on the road necessarily. I, I, not that I don't think there's any way we beat them, but it's not exactly something Seahawks fans would be excited about, I don't think. So what can happen at this point? Let's say the Seahawks beat the football team, beat the 49ers, but lose to the Rams. Well, it's going to come down to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Can the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lose a game to kick them to the sixth seed and push us to the fifth seed? It's not looking great there either. If you take a look, the Buccaneers play the Falcons in Atlanta, and the Falcons are playing slightly better, but they're still not a good team. They play the Lions in Detroit, and the Lions might not even have Matthew Stafford right now. We don't know what his injury situation is. And then you have Week 17 at home against Atlanta. So those are three really weak teams Tampa Bay gets to finish this season with. So if you're looking for a potential loss, it's probably going to come in Atlanta this upcoming week. That would be enough to kick Seattle up to the fifth seed. But that's really what you're banking on. So if the Seahawks end up losing the division by losing to the Rams in Week 16, it is most likely we're going to have to go for the three t third times a charm against the Rams in the playoffs. Now, the good news is, if you want to take a look for more worst-case scenario type things, let's say the Seahawks lose to Washington in this upcoming game, 
and lose to the Rams, meaning they would lose two in a row, they would still project to be the sixth seed. So nothing really changes there, meaning that once again, this upcoming game against Washington is almost meaningless. Now, once again, I want to put, reiterate, I want us to win that game just so we can build some confidence and make me as a fan believe this team is good enough to do something in the playoffs. But this Washington game really is approaching no stakes for this Seahawks team. The only way it matters will be if Green Bay and New Orleans just completely fall apart. You can win that game or lose that game. It's not changing the seedings whatsoever for us or Washington. Now, if the Seahawks lose out, let's say somehow they lose to the 49ers, they're still in the playoffs for the moment. They would be the seventh seed playing the Saints in the first round of the playoffs. So it's extremely unlikely we can actually fall out of the playoffs entirely. That would take um, losing out, plus you would need the Vikings to win against the Saints probably. That's basically what it takes for the Seahawks to actually fall out of the playoffs at this point. So, not really worried about that. That would take an unholy series of events. But, the the thing I want people to take away from this video is that the Seahawks basically only have two realistic paths in front of them, and we should just focus on those two paths. The Washington game that we're playing this week really doesn't mean all that much. If we beat the Rams and the Niners we will win the division and be the third seed almost certainly. We would need the Saints to just kind of collapse for us to even jump to the two seed. And I'm not going to even imagine the Packers falling apart to that degree for us to take their spot. If we lose to the Rams, then we are almost certainly going to get the six seed and almost certainly going to have to play the Rams in the first round of the playoffs. If we get the third seed then it seems like our most likely opposition in the first round would be Tampa Bay. And those are basically the two most realistic paths. So you can play with a few more scenarios if you really want to and get us to the first seed, get us to the seventh seed, get us to the fifth seed. But these are the two by far most realistic paths in front of the Seahawks. If you win week 16 and week 17, you will win the division and get the three seed. If you lose to the Rams, or I guess lose to the 49ers, you're probably looking at the sixth seed. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope this video was informative to you. Hope this video was educational as to why rooting against somebody like the Packers or the Saints is, is it's kind of a lost cause at this point, and I wouldn't spend too much time thinking about it. Think about this team playing good enough in the last three games to convince you that they are good enough to go on the road and beat a team like the Packers or the Saints or maybe even the Rams. And that's going to do it for me. Peace out. Go Hawks. Streams later tonight. Going to try to beat the act, the second act of Dragon Quest. And uh, if you want a really good reason to still be steamed about what we did against the Giants, this video is a great, great, great example of why that loss still stings. All right, see y'all later.